Hello, welcome to Cancer Soothe. I'm Julie and today I've got a real treat for you. I have one of the UK's leading integrative doctors, Dr Rosie Daniel, here to have a chat with me on Zoom today. Now, I would book an appointment with Rosie each week after I'd had an appointment with my oncologist. The reason why is I always felt that there was something missing from after I'd had the appointment with the oncologist as to what more I could really be doing. And this is what integrative medicine is all about, and Rosie will explain that. And the bottom line is they still haven't found a cure for cancer. In my own opinion, it's because cancer, like any other chronic illness, is about more than just pharmaceuticals. It's about how we're living our lives. And so, without more to do, I'm going to get on with our call with wonderful Rosie. But before then, if this is the sort of information that does interest you, I'd really appreciate it if you could take a second to just click the subscribe button and that would really help me, guys. Thanks very much. I'll see you the other side. Hello, Rosie. What a treat this is to have you here today. I feel so privileged. Oh, bless you, Julie. And how wonderful to see you looking so well and radiant. Oh, well, thanks to you, Rosie. <laughs> well, lo lots of people here won't know what an integrative doctor is. And so I thought this is the perfect time for perhaps you to tell everybody how you got to be here from starting off as a GP and your journey to this point, really. Great. Well, what we mean by an integrative medicine doctor is a doctor who's looking at a person in the round in terms of what's going on in the body, the mind, the spirit, the environment, the social context. Um, and that involves people like me studying a whole raft of things. So as well as studying medicine, studying psychology, complementary therapies, nutrition, spiritual healing, self-help approaches. So my job when I meet somebody is really to work through um, what they how they feel they are, how they feel they're coping um, and, and really looking like in a detective mission to see, you know, which parts of a person's life are OK, but where there's um, others where changes are needed to get the person as strong as they can possibly be and particularly to get their immunity back up and fighting again. And, and your question as to how I got there, well, actually I was, I was interested before I studied medicine because I had a girlfriend who had a really severe colitis and I, I noticed the way that it fluctuated with her state of mind. So when she was happy and excited and in love, um, everything calmed down, but when she got anxious and conflicted and upset, it flared up. So I was witnessing the mind-body connection um, but at that time, back in the 70s, there weren't any words for that. Nobody was talking about it. So I set off on a, on a really an exploration to try and find where I could study this. And the, the place I found that was talking about the effect of the mentals on the body was acupuncture. So I started off as if to go down that road. Um, the person I asked to train me said, He'd only train me if I got science O and A levels, which set me off that that was a three year path because I had come out of school with arts. And um, during that time, my head of department said, you can't waste a brain like, of, like yours on this uh, complementary medicine rubbish. And I didn't agree with him, but I thought that is how people are thinking. And if I want to be a bridge between the worlds of orthodox and complementary medicine, I really need to have a medical degree. So um, actually the seed was planted way before I went to medical school and it was in, um, uh, I qualified in 83 and it was in 85 I found the amazing Bristol Cancer Help Centre uh, founded by Penny Braun um, who herself got breast cancer and had the creative intelligence to think what's the difference between people who survive this illness and who don't because there was a 50% survival um, incidence at that time and uh, so she just set about thinking um, what are all the factors which would predict survival and uh, she set off on, a, on a, an odyssey you know a healing odyssey all around the world to nutritional centers and immune centers biofeedback herbal um, 
experts, acupuncture, energy medicines. She went to um, meditate in retreat centers and um, she could tell that she was healing. She was, she was actually getting better herself because the tumor she had was reabsorbing. But um, she, she became convinced it was up to her and her beloved friend, Pat Pilkington, to start a center. And when they did that back in 79, it started an avalanche of interest in this natural way. Um, and uh, she was really right, um, right at the right time because people came from all over the United Kingdom and world really to um, embrace what she called the gentle way with cancer. Yeah, Penny Brom, my favorite cancer charity. That's really amazing, an important part of my recovery. Yeah, well, I, I have this advantage of, of working with Penny as a friend and as a as a client because um, I joined the centre in 85. They'd been going six years and I walked her journey with her right up till her passing at the time of the millennium. Um, and, um, and now the centre's called after her. It's called Penny Bron UK and it's in Pill just outside Bristol. Mm. But they now do a nationwide outreach program, which is even more amazing. They got quite large. So well yeah. done, you. Well, thank you, thank yeah. you. It's been a life's work, and and when I um, left the centre in two thousand, the aim was to see can we now focus on this amazing regenerative health model with people before they even get cancer, because um, I used to at the end of the weeks at the cancer help centre. I heard people saying, this has literally been the best week of my life. I have come home to myself. I've come fully alive for the first time. And I was thinking, well, crikey, why do people have to be frightened to death to come fully alive? Yeah. You know, can we not bring this all back up the river? So I now run a, a coaching organization called Health Creation. And the mission really is to, um, it's rather an ambitious mission, but to make health, not illness, the norm within society to see can we get people fully engaged, you know, with their absolutely optimum health, well-being and life energy. Yeah, and of course, I was very lucky to have one of your mentors help me. But, um, you're backtracking just a little bit, Rosie, um, as to when I first met you. Um, yeah. I always think I was really lucky because it was the start of my diagnosis and I had a dear old childhood friend who happened to know you. Mm. I never knew that such people like yourselves existed. No. Um, whereas mm. I should imagine that a lot of your patients actually come to you because mainstream medicine hasn't worked for them. Is that true? Was I quite unique? I mean, is my success down to the fact that you got me early? You think? Well, Julie, I would have to say absolutely yes, that um, the earlier people get going with an integrative pathway, the better. You know, the body has got immune um, mechanisms to fight cancer. Every one of us make cancer cells every day, but we have the healthy immune system which can actually deal with this. And, um, and uh, there are other factors apart from immunity. There's our nutritional status, there's the acidity, of the body and all importantly stress unhappiness distress things which are literally sitting on us weighing down our body's ability to heal and um, i know for you there were some biggies that you had to address um, big not only what i would call health um, creation goals uh, for, for the body but also lifestyle goals and emotional and spiritual goals to get yourself in the super fit, well place you are today. Mm. No, I think you're referring to me leaving my marriage, which, yeah, I did that quite early on. And, and lots of people thought I was mad doing that when everybody said that I was going to die. So that, that was, yeah, a really big deal. And, and, and very brave, you know, because when you are frightened and, and fighting for your life, you know, doing earthworks, addressing situations, emotional situations or a job or a, I remember I had one lady called Mary who came to see me at the Cancer Help Centre who had a lung tumour. And at the end of the introductory day, she said, Rosie, I'm in the wrong job, in the wrong house, with the wrong man, in the wrong town. And I wow. thought, oh my goodness, 
<laughs> oh my goodness um and and she said where do we start and i said well maybe we should start with your nutrition and your acidity and she said nope i know what i've got to deal with and um that lady had a full recovery from lung cancer and i then saw her again um after we'd done that work together nearly 10 years later where she came to the cancer help center as a supporter of somebody else you know so um i know that um these these deep changes and shifts people make can be the key to to healing and all credit to you really because in that first appointment that we had where you you go back right in time to find out who i am and how i'd got there um I think I knew within myself that my marriage had been difficult for a long time. And I think you have a very skillful way at helping people to focus and see things that you can live with for a long time and just not realize it. And yeah. it, what you do is far more than just medicine, Rose, isn't it? You, you well, like people, don't you? The, absolutely. And I've been described um, rather sweetly by one lady as a physician of the soul, um, mm. which I, I thought was beautiful because what I'm really trying to help people get right to the core of am I in truth and on purpose in my life? Am I living true to myself or am I um, actually only half alive because I've um, basically accepted less than um, what is really right for myself? And that can be on any level. You know, some of us, um, I would say one of the overriding features of the people I see is people who have, have chronically put other people first. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they are what I call other focused. And it's, it's delightful to care so much and look after other people. But even in the Bible, it says, you know, love, um, love each other as you love yourself. You know, it's like that infinity sign. Yes, be of service, be great, be a volunteer, but apply equal um, loving attention to yourself. So, you know, that that's one of the huge things I see. But also people who've allowed themselves to become dominated by the values of others, be it a partner, be it a parent, be it a school, a university, a religion, a country, where um, we've been dominated and are not living true to ourselves. I mean, how many people living are thinking, my goodness, yes. Um, and I had one lady who came in who was a very high powered lady in her career, but um, I, she was looking at a book I'd written um, and she said, this is me, this is me on this page. And I, what, what? And she said, well, I realized reading this, I haven't made a decision about what I eat, what I wear, where we go on holiday, um, how we decorate our house, ever. That I have been totally kowtowing in my life to my husband, to my kids, to my to my workplace, and um, and not ever living true to myself. Mm -hmm. So you know yeah. we do we do go deeper. And when I'm doing that original um, interview, Julie, I'm I'm trying to get a sense of is there a wound in the emotional uh, life of that person? Are there great big stressors? Has this person been living um, under the burden of, of stress or distress since they were a tiny child? Um, I had a lady yesterday who lived um, with a suicidal mother and an alcoholic father her whole childhood. And so her, her autonomic nervous system had been set in startle and alert and overdrive, um, you know, fight and flight overdrive since she was a, a little child. And surprise, surprise, she's in adrenal exhaustion now. And yeah, with can relate other, to that. <laughs> yeah, with the other glands um, uh, affected, the thyroid, the, the, the pancreas and so forth, you know, because when we are exposed in in nature to yes to be able to go fully out into stress and challenge and full alert but to resolve and come back into equal and opposite let go restore regenerate and that's the state in which healing occurs mm -hmm. so that's another thing at the top of my list is trying to help people learn how to get out of that sort of go 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 stress 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 mode across into gentle flow, right brain, self-healing activity. 
And yeah, I mean, another special, well, probably the most special part of my experience of working with you, Rosie, was, do you remember, um, quite early on, I came to one of your fabulous retreats in the south of France, in that monastery that you rent, where there's a group of us, and every morning we'd do Shigong, wouldn't we, in the chapel, it was glorious. And one day you stood behind me, and I didn't realise it, and then later on in the afternoon, when I had a one-on-one -on -one session with you in the garden, um, it was quite a teary one, wasn't it? Because you turned around and you revealed to me that you're putting out to me how much you wanted me to just believe that I could heal. Because when you're told you're terminal by um, an oncologist, you know, a huge part of you starts to believe it. And I can remember saying to you in tears, is it really that simple, Rosie? Is it really that simple that I can turn this around? And you said, yes, you just have to believe. And the magical thing about that moment, it was almost like I opened a door, a portal that I literally stepped into. Mm -hmm. And it was like a new day, a new dawn. And I chose to believe it was black and white, just like that. Yeah. And there was magic in that. I really yes. Well, exactly. And be belief is the absolute key, Julie. And um, I can, I think you might have even said to me, I don't dare to believe that I can be one of the lucky ones. You know, what's special about me? Why should, did you remember saying that? Probably. Yeah, I think you said, I don't, you know, why, why should I be special? Why should I be um, the one that heals and has a remarkable um, radical remission? And I said, well, why, why wouldn't you be? Why couldn't you be? And I dared you to believe. I just said, you know, can you tell me that I, be that I believe that I can heal? And you said, yes, I, I, will, I will from now on believe that I can heal. Mm -hmm. And you said that was like a, a portal opening. Well, I can tell you story after story after story of, of when people have dared to believe and, and have actually made it so. And in fact, um, a clever uh, couple of people, Carol Hirschberg, and um, Mark Orbaum a long time ago did a study of survivorship in cancer. And what they did was they looked at all the things people with, they took a group of survivors and they looked at um, what did they believe? Um, what self-help practices did they do? What therapies did they do? Um, and um, what they found, because they, they made all these intersecting um, pictures like patterns of, of what they had in common, these survivors, and guess what? It turned out they were people who believed in their own ability to heal. So pe people with fighting spirit who believed they could affect their prognosis. They were often people who believed in a higher power. So either God or angels or the universe, um, the ability um, for there to be energy healing for them or spiritual healing for them. They were people who used belief-based practices like um, imaging, visualization, affirmation, people making choices. Um, and they were people who used belief-based therapies like hypnosis. You know, so if you have a hard job convincing yourself, then get thee to a hypnotherapist who starts to embed these new notions. And when people work with my mentors, we create what we try to do is unpick what we call limiting beliefs. So most of us will be living with, um, uh, to some extent or another, sort of faulty software, which is saying to us, you know, you can never do this, you can never have this lifestyle, who do you think you are to be special or different? And um, through our lives, we can have been sort of nipped and tucked, you know, with those kinds of taking on board those um, beliefs uh, that, that then literally, like faulty software on a computer, limit what can happen to us. So um, it's very important that we um, start to create a whole raft of new beliefs that I can heal and that I will heal and that I choose healing of body, mind and spirit. And you, you touched into an all important point about um, the messages that we get from the voice of authority, the consultant, the white coated doctors and um, human beings. We are very, very biddable. We're very hypnotizable. 
and suggestible. So if somebody says you have got six months to live with this disease or the statistical probability of you being in, here in a year is 5% or whatever, then um, especially if that's coming from the voice of authority, we will take that on board. And there are people who literally die to order, you know, who die on the day that the consultant has said. It's almost like they go home and ring it in the calendar and and um, and die to order. Yeah, Whereas the, the word aggressive was a big one for me, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the um, I, I've seen many people who have um, and and even who managed to create a, a, a different bubble, a different reality for themselves, go back into the hospital and have that bubble popped um, by consultants. And so sometimes we have to manage our consultants and say, look, I'm choosing to live with this. I know there are statistics, but what I would greatly appreciate is, you know, I don't want you dangling these things in front of me. Um, and, and actually what I want is encouragement and reinforcement that I'm doing well and not to be sort of confronted with prognosis or, you know, all these other facts and figures. And I can just uh, tell you a, a gorgeous story of a lady called Veronica, who I met in the early days of the Cancer Help Centre, who went to a dermatologist purely to have a little um, mole removed from her chin that she didn't like the look of only to be told later in that day that this was a melanoma, that it was already in her liver, and that she had three months to live. And she completely freaked out and she grabbed the hands, the, the consultant's hands were on the desk and she grabbed them and she banged them up and down and she said, you can't tell me I've got three months to live. I've just adopted two children and I am not going to die until those two children are out of school. And she ran out into the waiting room and she said, that bastard in there just told me I've got three months to live. Do I look like I've got three months to live? And she went home and her neighbours, she was supposed to be going to a dance that night. And her neighbours came in and said, oh my God, obviously we can't go. And she said, if this is happening to me, I'm going to a dance every night. <laughs> so she was, she was really clear from the very first day that, that absolutely this was not her reality absolutely not mm. and guess what she lived for nine years and seven months until two weeks after the second child came out of school wow yeah. so and that was with a so-called three months prognosis and as she was nearing her demise we said to her why didn't you say till these two kids were married <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, anyway, you know, she she obviously did magnificently, but she completely fulfilled her. It's like she slung her hook, you know, if you were a climber, she slung her hook to a, a place a long way in the future and um, reopened her timeline. Because, you know, when, when we're first diagnosed, um, what can happen is that our sense of future collapses. And because um, normally speaking, you know, we have a sense of where we're going to be you know it may not be too clear but where we're going to be when we're 60 or 70 or 80 or you know um how well, our I, life... well esby my daughter was my motivation so i'd better start focusing on seeing her receive her pension then haven't i <laughs> yes yes that's the one yeah, yeah push so, those push yeah so we, i mean we've been talking a lot about headset here but of course you know you are a qualified doctor and some of the most useful things I also got from you was a whole list of supplements, which I took right early on. So that, yeah. that's part and part of what you offer. We could spend a fortune on supplements. And it was really helpful that you had your own brand, which, which had lots of mixed things within them. And I think I really did save a lot of money by buying, you know, the mix of supplements you recommended that were mm -hmm. for my particular situation and knowing how many to take and when and all this sort of thing. And of course, you also suggested that I did the RGCC blood test. So you've got a lot to your bag. It's not just mindset, is it, Rosie? Not at all. No, I think what um, one of my primary roles as an integrative medicine doctor is helping people kind of navigate between orthodoxy and complementary and self-help because there are times when orthodox medicine is completely needed. Um, so part of my job is helping people 
decide are they safe um, to go natural or do they need a bit of, of orthodox medicine and how do you weave those two together? That's really important. Mm. Um, the nutritional element is really important and there I would place great emphasis on getting our bodies alkaline. And unfortunately, there's a load of, of, of misinformation about that on the internet. So people are saying that lemons will make you alkaline. Well, they can't possibly make you alkaline because they're highly acidic and they use up a lot of buffering in the body. So I get people onto a, a low acid way of eating. Um, supplements, I've been very blessed to work with Cytoplan who are a very high integrity uh, company who work only with what's called food state vitamins and whole food vitamins, which are presented to the body in the way that um, it, they're maximally bioavailable. Um, but they've really kindly made, um, for example, a multi uh, vitamin for my clients called Lifeline Formula, which has got very high levels of vitamin C. Um, because before people were having to take a separate um, beta carotene, C, uh, D, E, um, and different selenium, zinc, um, all, all as different separates. Um, so Cytoplan put it all together in a very high dose um, way. And so that's a wonderful thing. Um, and they've made a, an immune booster called Max Immune. Um, which is based on beta-glucan, which is a very highly efficacious immune booster because, um, you know, our, our immunity can go down um, for all kinds of reasons and long-term stress or unhappiness can really, really bring our immunity down. So, you know, boosting it, boosting it, yes, by life change is important, but we can boost it by what we take through our mouth as well. Rosie, I'm aware that during lockdown with covid it's really difficult for a lot of people especially those that have perhaps finished their treatment and there's very little hand holding out there and i think this is where your mentors come into their own can you explain a bit more how they can help people yes absolutely so the mentors are trained to work through a six months health creation program with people and this is based around 12 health creation principles, three for the body, three for the mind, three for the spirit, three for the environment. And it starts with a mapping process called the picture of health, um, which enables people to work out where am I strong and where are the gaps, um, where am I vulnerable? Um, but also we look at the relationship with ourselves, this issue of can we self care? Um, how good are we at looking after ourselves? Um, and we also get people feeling what's going on on the inside, tuning in, learning how to actually feel what their state is and what their needs are. So the mentors work um, with people monthly uh, in order to help them define what are their health creation goals going to be for the next month. And then that goes on over and over again for the next six months. It can go on longer. Um, one of my mentors has just finished with a lady after two and a half years because she had a really, really tricky home situation and abusive relationship that she needed to find her way out of. And it took a lot of support. Um, but if people would like to work with a mentor, just write in to support at healthcreation.co.uk. Um, so that's the address to write to. If people would just like to explore, I'll then put them in touch with a mentor who can explain how it works with no obligation, and um, and just to see if that's the if that's the the right sort of help. Because exactly as you say, often when treatment stops, people can feel very alone, and and um, and actually the reality of the situation can can come up to the surface. But if people can get working on this amazing um, regenerative health program, there's everything to play for. That's great. Mm. Well, let's finish off by telling everybody that, of course, they can access you as well. During COVID, you're available on Zoom from presumably wherever people are in the world. They just That's have right. to link into your web page and book a call. And so That's right. I will be so, putting the details for that in, in the foot of... Um, the description on this video yeah and, um, yeah 
you're wonderful Rosie I really don't think oh. I'd be here without you <laughs> oh. well you're very that. sweet to say so but it's you and other people like you who enable me to say to everybody I work with that cancer can heal cancer is a two-way program uh, process it can it can go forward but it can also go back into remission and it can be healed altogether I got a, an email um, a few days ago from a, a, a beautiful man called Reg. So on YouTube, there's a little film called The Message of Hope. So if people put in Dr. Rosie Daniel, Message of Hope, um, you'll see a sweet little film I made way back along. And one of the stars is a sweet man called Reg Flower, who I met in the 90s when he had a widespread secondary melanoma and had been told he had six months to live. So I got an email from Reg the other day saying, thought you'd like to know, just had my 87th birthday and I'm living the life of Riley in the Costa Brava. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yes, people do come to my website is drrosydaniel.org and there there's a button for how do I work and there's another one for make a booking and let's get cracking. Lovely. Thanks very much, Rosie. Take Thank care. you, Julie, and, and you're a total inspiration to me. Thank you so much for being such an incredible example of what can happen. Thank you. Hopefully you've enjoyed that and all Rosie's wonderful anecdotes. Now, I'm aware that there might be a few of you out there who, at the end of the day, can't afford to see Rosie. What I need to tell you is that integrative doctors are available at the wonderful cancer charity Penny Bronyo UK here in the UK. I'll put a link below in the description so you can find out more. So please don't let that be a barrier to you getting access to these wonderful doctors. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe. Coming up now. Bye.